Hello there and welcome to the webinar on how to host Kahoot remotely and assigned self-paced games. I think everybody has joined in the meantime, so let's start. Great. So my name is Evelyn. Uh, I'm the community specialist at Kahoot and I am based in our Oslo office, which is the headquarters of Kahoot, Oslo in Norway. If you want to ask a question throughout the webinar, please use the Q&A tool. Um, I can't promise to be able to get through all the questions at the end, but I will do my best and I will share um, uh, information afterwards about where you can find all of the FAQs and I will try to answer all the questions. Great, so what is Kahoot actually? Uh, many of you probably already know what Kahoot is, but let me just do a quick recap for everybody who is new. So Kahoot is the leader in gamifying learning in the workplace, which means that we have a platform to use uh, that you can use for e-learning, presentations, or to make training engaging. So this platform, um, on this platform, you can create games, which are quizzes that you can then play with um, remote learners or with people in the same room, or you can send them um, games that they can play afterwards, which we'll get to in a second. Businesses use Kahoot for e-learning, like I said for training in person or remote. It's the remote part that we will be focusing on today. For interactive presentations, it's something to make every presentation fun with. For compliance training, to engage audiences at live and virtual events, which is also something we will cover. Um, and as onboarding for new hire hires, for instance, with a, a selfie Kahoot, as we call them, where people can introduce themselves through a Kahoot game. There's two ways to play Kahoot. First is a live game which is um, the game where the Kahoot game will be presented on the screen and people can everybody can see the screen. So people will play this um, while they are either all together in the same room or all together in the same presentation, webinar, it can be Zoom, it can be Skype, anything. So people are playing at the same time. We call these live games. Uh, the second way to do a video conference is video only, which is more connected. Um, but only a couple of people will probably be able to connect at the same time. But to do a video conference with a Kahoot is super connected as everybody can participate at all times. So doing a video conference with a Kahoot where you present and host a Kahoot live. With hosting, we mean that you are actually starting the game and people will play then that makes you be able to connect with everybody, bring together distributed or remote teams or your entire organization. You can engage via video with live audience, audience participation and interaction in video conferences, webinars or meetings. You'll be able to actually see people engage in it. And then, for instance, if they get an answer correctly, they will be able to cheer and you will see this. It's great. It's also cost efficient learning impact since there's no need to travel since you will be able to host this from anywhere at any time. The second way to play is to through uh, assigning self paced games. We call these Kahoot challenges and I will be showing how all of this looks in a platform in a minute. Great. So with self paced challenges, people can learn remotely as it's convenient and versatile and it facilitates e learning at their own pace. You can learn across time zones as well. So you can send challenges to anybody, anytime, anywhere. People can retain knowledge as it reinforces the content. For instance, if we play a game and afterwards, I would ask you to do the same game, but in a Kahoot challenge, you will be reinforcing knowledge. With our player identifier feature, which I will also show you during the demo, you will actually know how people, which people have completed the game as before people start uh, playing, they will be asked to put in their email address or any other information that you've chosen. And you will be able to track in the reports who exactly has completed your game and track their progress over time. Great. Let's move on to the actual demo. When you log into your Kahoot account, you come to the dashboard, which is the home screen. Um, here you can see a couple of blogs, you can see the topics that we featured, so cahoots that we think are very important. So for instance, the coronavirus, as everybody is talking about it, uh, tips and tricks on working from home. I strongly recommend you look at this one. It's great. It's filled with a lot of tips. You can play it with all of your employees, communication, etc. If you want more games that are already pre-made, you can go to the Discover page. And here you find a vast collection of games that we have featured. So all of these are business related. You can look at them. You can search for whatever cahoots you want. 
And then if you want to have your own cahoots, these will be made under cahoots. If you click create, you can create your own cahoots. So let me show you how that looks. When creating a new game, you can either choose to create from scratch or you can use one of the pre-made templates. These templates have all of the questions filled in and they will show you exactly where you need to put in your personal information or the information of your company. Let's start with a Kahoot from scratch. We have a lot of different question types, which are great for specific purposes. The normal quiz type is like you normally know if you've already played Kahoot. It's a question and then four answers. So for instance, if I would be able to um, create a question, I would do, for instance, a very trivia topic. What is the capital of Norway, which is where I'm located? So we do Oslo, Copenhagen, London, or Dublin. At this point, people will have to add, um, choose the actual correct answer. And you can also add images, which makes it even more engaging. If you click on image library, you have access to millions of Getty images, which is fantastic. And they will even show you suggestions so you don't even have to type. So let's do Oslo and pick an image. This one is beautiful. And then if I preview, this is how it shows uh, when you're actually hosting a game live. People at this point will be prompted on their device to choose the right color that corresponds with the right answer. You can also add true or false questions, which are very explanatory. It's just true or false. And since these are already pre-filled, you just have to ask, uh, answer your question and you're done. With open-ended questions, you can um, recall without giving prompts. So if you, for instance, want to put here, what is the capital of Norway? You would write Oslo and people have to write it on their device instead of seeing four options that might skew their um, knowledge as basically they can already guess what it could be. With a poll, you can gauge people for their feedback. This looks exactly like a normal um, Kahoot quiz because it just gives you four answer options as well. But obviously, there's nothing that's correct since poll is just about feedback and about your own personal opinions. Another way to gather opinions of people is to use word cloud, which is something that I strongly recommend to you to use if you're doing a remote training or a remote presentation or anything. Since this will actually give your uh, participants a voice, you can actually ask them to write something. So if I would write here, what do you think about my presentation? You'd be able to write up to 20 characters about what you actually think. And our last, um, sorry, second to last uh, question type is puzzle. This is um, an interesting one. It's very difficult for people to do it. So it's something that really, immediately puts deeper focus since here people are asked to put four questions uh, four parts of an answer in the correct order so they don't have to choose one specific answer here is just put a process into order uh rank facts or put a timeline in order the second you play this you will see that people immediately go quiet and start completely focusing on trying to put everything in the right order and then our last question type is slide, which is not a question, but it's content. This is perfect for Kahoot challenges. If you're playing a Kahoot challenge, that means that you're not playing at the same time as others. So you're not in the same room either. So a slide works as any other slide for any presentation tool. And you can just put in information. So you can add either text, you can write something, you can add images, you can add a YouTube link, anything that works for you. You can put here just to give more information or to um, transition to a new topic, it, you can use it for anything. Somebody is asking with open-ended questions that capitalization matters. It does not. So the person who uh, writes the first answer, that is the one that will take it, but capitalization is all negated. You don't have to write multiple, um, multiple words with different capitalization. Great. So let me show you how this looks in an actual code. We've created a Kahoot that has all of the question types in it. And here, if I choose edit, I will show you how this looks. So this um, quiz is completely finished. So there's quiz questions, there's polls, which you can do in the beginning of a Kahoot, just like to get the feel of the temperature of the room, basically. You can do slides to give more information or to position it towards a new topic, which is basically what I did here. P 
puzzle. Like I said, put processes into order. So this is how to add a new lead in your sales tool. If you do an open-ended one, this can be different types of things. So you can add up to four different uh, answers, which is great for, for instance, here, manager or line manager. There's different um, terminology, so you can add everything here. With word cloud, like it says here, you can get opinions and give people a voice. So those are all the question types. So let's go through how it looks when you're actually playing. When you want to play a Kahoot, like I said, there's two ways to play. You can either play a live game, which you can do via video conferencing, which we will do later, or you can play a Kahoot Challenge, which is a self-paced remote game. So when you click play on any Kahoot, you get two options. You get host live or create challenge. If you host live, people will get, um, if you click classic, people will get a game pin. So this game pin, you can either share over your video conferencing tool, you have the option to mute the lobby or to unmute it. And then your, all your players will go to kahoot.it or use the Kahoot app, enter the game pin and put in their nicknames. You don't have to actually join this game. We will play a game at the end of the, um, at the, end of the presentation. The second way to play is to create a challenge. So if you click play and you create challenge instead, here you can create challenges. You can set the deadline up to three weeks um, after the, the date that you actually created. So let's put the 14th of April and 5 p.m. You have a different types of options. You can put player identifier. As I said earlier, this is to ask um, players to put in their email address so you know who's actually completed these. And then create. With this, you get a challenge link that you can share or you just get the game pin. You can choose whatever is easiest for you. You see the deadline, how long people still have to actually complete the challenge. And if you copy it, everybody can play the challenge. You can share it with them via your messaging tool, email, or you can share directly on Microsoft Teams. So this is how it looks if you play a challenge. Challenges can be played in the app, on the mobile browser, or on the normal browser. So if I would put in an uh, email address here, since this is player identifier, this is my email address. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Then everybody, um, well, the host afterwards will be able to see that I have completed this challenge. During challenges, people see their questions and answers at the same time um, in the same screen. So you don't need a host for this. So this is how it will look. I can just click. There you go. And I immediately get feedback that is correct and I can move on. Here you also see the scoreboard of everybody who has already completed the, um, the challenge. While people are um, creating, well, sorry, completing the challenge, you can see the reports uh, as you go. So under reports, there are different things you can look at. We have either challenges reports, which is a trophy icon, or we have live game reports, which is the controller here. A challenge report and a live game report will look the same, but on challenges that are still ongoing, as you can see here, challenges in progress, you can still see the game pin, which is great for if you have sent it to a couple of people, but you want to invite more players, just go to the reports, look at the challenge in progress and copy it again. So here you can see a couple of people have answered and uh, a couple haven't yet. So you can see the final score up until uh, the challenge isn't active anymore. When the deadline has passed, you see the whole overview. A couple of tips that I can give you to do um, Kahoot, to play Kahoot's live over a video conferencing tool. Do a dry run before. So before I started this webinar, I did a dry run with a, a couple of my colleagues just to see that everything worked, that I was sharing everything correctly, that the microphone works. Also make sure you only have one Microsoft um, microphone, sorry, or speaker at the same time in the same room, since otherwise you might get feedback. Try to also close other tabs to reduce the, the loading speed on your um, browser. Try to reshare images and video, which is something that I like to do as well. I will show you when we play a Kahoot game. After the question has ended, you can actually click on the image again and then show it. You can do word cloud question to give a player a voice so it's more inclusive and everybody can actually participate in it. The tips for my um, playing a Kahoot challenge 
is that you can do, uh, you can see the reports in real time, like I just showed you. You can send a reminder via email by just, again, going to reports and clicking on the challenge as is in progress to get the challenge pin again. And try to add videos um, or images in your slides in between questions to incorporate instruction into your challenge. It's a lot. If you want to learn more, there are resources you can use. So during this uh, webinar, I've given you all the information. We have a lot more information that recaps this on gahoot.com slash business slash e-learning. If you go to this, you get um, information on how to play Kahoot Live, how to play Kahoot via a challenge. You can also find success stories on our blog, as well as case studies. You can go to YouTube, our YouTube channel, and find short guide videos, which are hosted by me. So I will take you through how to use specific question types and what you can use them for specifically for business. You can find answers on our FAQ section, um, support.kahoot.com. And if there's anything you haven't found information about yet, you can send us an email on business at kahoot.com or reach out to me personal, personally via evelynj at kahoot.com. Be sure to follow us on LinkedIn as I post constant updates there and uh, you'll be able to get all of the newest information as well as see the latest videos that we've created. That was the end of my webinar. Thank you so much for attending. I hope everything goes well with your business and that your remote work will become more engaging and more fun through Kahoot. Thank you so much.